Welcome back to Black News Tonight. Before the break, we spoke with artist and visionary Akon. He told us about his plans for a city of the future in Senegal. But now I want to add to the conversation because it seems that not one but two real life Wakandas are in the works. Akon City, Uganda, located over 3,000 miles away from the first one, is scheduled to be completed by 2036. Joining me and Akon to talk about this and more is Baker Kabanda. He's an author and an entrepreneur from Uganda's capital, Kampala. Baker, welcome to the show. Uh, how eager, first of all, are Africans on the continent to work with black American investors right now? Well, Africans on the continent are very, very eager and very, very excited to have African Americans come back to the continent. Um, as you may have known, um, in 2019, Ghana hosted uh, the year of return uh, where they uh, rolled out a red carpet for African Americans to come back on the continent uh, to check it out, see what opportunities are available, reconnect with the motherland. So in as far as Africa is, is concerned, we are very, very, very ready. We, as a matter of fact, it's taken a long time. We've been waiting a long time. So we are very, very ready for African Americans to come back home and invest on the motherland. Wow. Akon, when you hear that, you know, or at least when I hear that, it, it resonates with me um, because it's exciting to know that Africans would prefer working with African Americans compared to investors from, say, uh, uh, Europe or Asia, for example. Uh, why do you think that is? Well, one of the biggest issues that Africa's had is that, you know, they've always worked with, you know, foreigners, you know, from Asians, Europeans, French, Germans, you know, English. But the problem is there, there's no there's no passion in Africa for them. It's just purely financial, you know. And ultimately, after, you know, doing 20, 30, sometimes 50 year contracts in these countries, after they leave, they leave nothing behind. The country still is in ruins. It's still actually sometimes even worse than it was before they came in. So there's never been real uh, advantages with allowing that to happen because people never really benefited from it, you know. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons why, you know, the only ones that really haven't been in Africa to invest is African Americans. And they're the last hope for Africa because they are African themselves, you know. So we want them to understand who they are, understand their value and realize that a lot of things that they're fighting for in America can be handed to them on a civil platter if they just came home. Mm, if they just came home. Uh, Baker, what kind of infrastructure is set up in countries like Uganda? Because part of the question is, you know, if you come home or if you just invest, you know, are there the mechanisms in place infrastructurally to allow your money to be protected for your investment to grow and, and to see some kind of real return, not just in terms of money, but in terms of the actual product? Uh, what do you say to that? What, what kind of infrastructure is there? Um, the infrastructure is in place. Of course, the governments uh, have put in place uh, different bodies to usher in investors. So in terms of uh, protection of uh, uh, people's uh, investments, that is guaranteed. Uh, if you look at the people who have invested so far, the Chinese have been hovering all over the continent. They've been in Uganda and elsewhere. They're investing and they're getting a very good return on their investment. The Europeans never left, so clearly there's enough security for capital. In terms of infrastructure for business, if I'm to touch on that subject, yes, infrastructure to support business is available. However, they still need, there are areas that need a little bit of help, areas like maybe uh, road infrastructure, for instance. It is a challenge on the African continent. However, the challenge is actually a veiled opportunity, right? I know for a fact that uh, Benjamin, Benjamin Banaka was one of the people behind the uh, construction of Washington, D.C. So certainly the African-Americans have the skill set, have the expertise. There's absolutely no reason why all these uh, construction contracts that are going on in Africa right now are being given to the Chinese. The African-Americans need to show up, bring the expertise on the motherland, and build Wakanda and bring it to life. Mm. Akon, why did you feel safe investing your money in Uganda? And I want to I preface this question uh, because 
I don't think that unsafety is a uniquely African thing because I don't want people to think, you know, you got to be scared to put your money in Africa. I mean, if you would have invested your money in Greece, you'd have been real out of luck. If you'd invested your money uh, in, in, you know, parts of the United States under in the Bush administration, you could have been se severely out of luck. So, you know, markets are volatile. Governments change. Uh, sometimes leadership matters. Uh, wh what made you feel safe uh, that you could do it in Uganda? Well, you know, honestly, when I first went to Uganda, before I even went there, I looked at all the things that could have been said about Uganda. I think I thought about all of the rumors that were spread about Uganda. And one thing I realized about African countries is that whenever there's negative propaganda about a specific country, it's only because there's a lot of opportunity there that they're trying to scare people away from coming mm. to. And when I went to Uganda, if I would have, would have been the average person and listened to the rumors and listened to all the negative press that was put out on Uganda from the past, which is, mind you, the stuff that was put out was stuff that was out since 40, 50 years ago that they're trying to make current, I would have been out of luck. That probably was one of the biggest and mm. best decisions I ever made was not thinking about what it is, going for myself to realize and see what the opportunities was. Uganda was so beautiful, man. The greenest country I've ever been to. And then on top of that, the opportunity there was just immaculate. And the people there was eager to work. You know, they were super excited to have me. It created the best, op like, it, you know, uh, uh, motivation for me to want to do more there, you know? Yeah, that's so important. Baker, before we go, what kind of businesses can you invest in uh, right now in Africa? Let's say a middle class person who's watching this show, they got a little bit of money to invest, uh, $10,000. I'm just going to pick a number. Say so they got $10,000, they've saved it, they want to invest. What kind of businesses should they be thinking about or can they be thinking about? Okay, um, Africa does ha have a wide range of businesses that people can invest in, all the way from the multi million dollar investments like Brother Econ is handling, all the way to the down tiny whiny investments. For example, 60% um, of the world's remaining arable land is on the African continent. So Africa has a lot of potential in the agriculture sector. Unfortunately, most of the agriculture on the continent, um, the, the, the items that, that, that we, we do cultivate, we export them in a raw form. There is a burning need to add value to these products before they're exported. Switzerland doesn't do a cocoa, yet they're the leading manufacturer of, of chocolate. All their cocoa comes from West Africa. So Uganda, and the rest of Africa has a huge potential when it comes to agriculture and adding value. I mean, with, with $10,000, $20,000, you can start a simple manufacturing plant that can maybe uh, uh, do ketchup from tomatoes, you know? And obviously, the, the demand is, 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 is massive. Africa population 3 billion people. You don't even need to look elsewhere for, for the market for your product. And with the recent uh, ratification of the African trade area, actually, what, what, what that is, is it has opened up Africa such that different African countries can easily do business with each other. Uh, it has lowered the tariff barriers of doing business across different African countries. So if you start up a simple business like maybe a juice manufacturing plant or a ketchup manufacturing plant, you definitely have a wide market that you're dealing with. Um, aside from that, um, people can come in terms of services. I know there are plumbers in America, there are electricians in America. I know um, there's lots of that in demand on the continent. It doesn't have to be just the big investments in, in mines and uh, uh, heavy infrastructure and everything, but even the low-hanging fruit. Anybody can do something. With just 10, 20,000, trust me, in a space of a year or two, you can be able to double, triple, or quadruple that. You can't do that anywhere else in the world. It's only in Africa where you have the capacity right now because it's still as virgin as they come. So the opportunity is immense. Wow. The market is there, and they're ready to, to, to purchase. They like good stuff, by the way. We like good quality stuff. So we like the Americans to bring, <laughs> bring it on and do some good quality stuff up in here. We, we are very bougie. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. 
Uh, my audience could definitely relate to that. Look, <laughs> Akon Baker, thank you so much for joining me, man. The work you all are doing is important. It's amazing. It's path breaking. No, thank and you, we bro. can't see. We can't wait to see where it leads. Uh, it's my pleasure, my brother. Everybody, let us know what you're thinking. Hit us up.